The Hope 6 project is a community where we have a mixed income. We have full market apartments. We have a, an IRS tax credit program. And then we have an income that is based on 30% of a resident's income. You have to 40% government assisted, 20% on a sliding scale, and then 40% each development is 40, 20, 40. And with completely government subsidy, we'll have an apartment next to someone who is with three. We in the real estate business are going about concentrated to create communities where there's a lot of time how can we make real estate that enhances the quality of life for the people that live there? And the community, and you'll see front porches, back porches. It has their own front door. On. You'll also look alike. You'll notice that the color of the doors change. So that as you're telling somebody to come visit you, you can say, you know, you turn on this on the left, and in case you forget it. I used to ride by this place, and I said, wow, that's nice apartments. I hope we would do. I like living downtown. It's, it's an atmosphere. Lots of things that are a set recreational, and, and very close to the couple uh, below us and uh, next to us and behind any problems and then any troubles. People that have, they want to make this, but you know, I want to make it there. I, I welcome all these people. Well, the Cabby family and don't have. Probably the first year was the biggest struggle because we were combating the metro name and the a true project to begin with. It was called Metropolitan Garden, a, a central city. The city was built back in the 1930s under the Roosevelt administration. We first started doing public housing, and it was based out of real, you know, these big cinder blocks. It could probably withstand a direct nuclear attack. <laughs> it's old-fashioned, hard, sturdy buildings, but it came out more. And, and I think in the 1980s, it was remodeled and then renamed as Metropolitan Gardens. I was an old resident in the projects across the street where old Central City Metropolitan Garden. We got a bad rap because they had in there that 35203 was the poorest, baddest zip code. I mean, it was bad. It was wild, wild. Yeah. 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 Corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Got up and had no. It was the wild, wild west. When I would get home from work, because I was coming out of my booty, came through. If I hadn't came out of the bedroom, I wouldn't be here to tell it today. The police softball out in the park. Every weekend they out. <laughs> I remember, I'm sitting out there like by the blot up, and I'll say, you know what I'm saying? They bad run too. <laughs> Instead of going in business, go. They did it right. You know what I'm saying? We first heard about in May, of, and we went to a meeting where the Housing Authority and Center were explaining to the residents the proposed hopes. They were asking residents questions. Would you like to have a walking track or a park? Somebody wanted a swimming pool, and really enthralled about this possibility of their having new homes. One question. Are these people going to be, be staying in those? And the Housing Authority said, most of you will not be coming back. Residents had heard that Hope Sick was not about them. Hope Sick it through the Alabama Finance Authority. They had a, an agreement <coughs> called LURC, is Land Use Restrictive Covenant. And under that, they were obligated to certain for income-based residents, and they have not.
they were supposed to give a pool. They were supposed to be computers. Swimming pool. What are the kids going to do? I don't. I don't see that there's anywhere to play. They they down down here. I don't know if you or place, but it's like a little where two or three kids could play. They didn't come through on their promise. They lied and paid. Yeah. <laughs> they lied. It was going to give us these things. They have been a lot of the residents, and they were supposed to have had some place in order to fall short. Where is all the stuff that uh, Park Park changed my life tremendously? You know, because I was kind of here. I changed my life because there was often, and this is just advertising, and it's unfair. It's very unfair. I watch any day back here. Uh, back when we had to play, you know what I'm saying, your mom look out the window. It was all right, you know what I'm saying. You did something wrong back The neighbor will whoop you up. Now, you know, you need for each other, you know. group of us who are tremendously committed to the neighbor how we can take part place. What we see is a three for a mixed income that, that's neat. That's good school options, um, good and also access to jobs. And a lot of good services are already provided in the community. You have the YMCA Youth Community Garden, that school that will open this fall. So we're really not so much as a but it's identifying, like I said, in the community and needs. The apartment complex that you is going to have an all get some stability leadership of Hope Six. It's one thing to send people here. Well, you're managing this Hope Six and this, but Nobody here to see it. The turn just awful. I mean, every six or less than that, you got to That's not good. If the stuff in this apartment is happening, then this will fall apart before you know. There's no hope. Is But if they bring in some people that are going to see it, and, and people that live here can work. Our food is worked pretty much smart model. We have multi thousand in California or the heartland trains come from. That really leaves out local. A whole problems come along with that. Emissions of fossil fuel, which goes into instead of making tastier vegetables, about what kind of vegetable is going to handle being shipped. That's not the kind of food I want. I want. Jones Valley Urban Farm was won uh, by Paige and Edwin Mart. And for the first few years, it was a labor of love for them. The community started waking up a little bit, trying to do what we in downtown Birmingham and to production organic farms and then we as a for running our education program.
organic component to our article, the, um, really the whole reason that I got into to realizing the food production system example, developed Gen's Valley Farm as a teaching tool to show people um, organic farming is both and beautiful and um, a good alternative to the current system of food production is in America. As if difficult enough, urban farming is even more difficult because there's just not money flowing to organic farming or just not in the works. Federal agriculture subsidized four or five major crops soybeans, wheat, and things like that. I feel like a lot of farmers uh, that use conventional chemicals, all those are shortcuts. Those chemicals also keep the soil. Dead culture. We strive for this alive. So to get beneficial organisms such as earthworms, ladybugs, those pretty little ladybugs, they're also very aphid eaters, so aphids actually purchase ladybugs, so it's a open way. instead of fighting the land constantly. It. A huge education. Uh, we have um, with Alabama Art and a program called um, Sustainable Agriculture. Really, school experience to life opportunities. Working in the garden, working in the kitchen, and in the classroom, experiential learning. Things stick with kids. Teach them to standards. It's hard to get, but if you have experiential ways to do it, things stick with you. The uh, education programs are at the heart of. I realized early on, while producing or and transforming vacant lots was a very important. Do I knew that the success of our depend on and making in the neighborhoods and in, in general, Valley Urban Farm was a vital part of the community. Seed to plate, which is K through kids, and we get an actual with us. Charles, look at this one. You can kiss. So the concept was literally uh, field trips schools onto the farm, grow food, harvest some food, and then um, where the students can help process the food, prepare the food, and create a healthy I see produce from seed. I love them. I hate zucchini, but I like Recognizing the huge social impacts that an urban farm could have, bringing walks of life to a place where they can work together is basically a situation. I mean, it's absolutely seen throughout the world that when you have an urban farm, um, are energized and, and um, encouraged to and um, find their common ground. We're currently doing a new site at the Gardens of Park Place, and we're really hoping that it's going to be a and everybody has one thing in common, that we all have to eat way around it. Um, common ground that you start with the community garden and um, most um, and can enjoy the simple process of watching seed germinate and watching plants grow their age and kind of ethnicity anything um, and so the garden will really be a mixing ground to show people in Birmingham or where you're from, you still can share this amount with your neighbors back to our mission of re we want to family and so they'll as well but they also
it and hopefully feel like they're an active member in their their quality up a little bit and we'd like to get them over here to work a bit and get them some great food in the process. Cal was started with a, a group saw a need, a further need, doing adopted out homes and a volunteer uh, organization and get animal to see overpopulation. Last year in 2000, dogs and cats were euthanized because of we, the culinary, get out seven, but we still haven't great that are being euthanized. There's been research that shows one male and female, along with all of their offspring, built in over eight million cats. If you look at those that that are not, not spayed or neutered not how away from those kind of situations can really have an uh, overpopulation on our hands. People at Animal Rescue are very passionate people. We are to get these pets and get homes for them. Passion. Cal gives animals a second. The animals we get are society. Nobody here on earth can make the to say that this this dog should day. You know, who has that authority? There's federal organizations and agencies that protect but they overlook the well being that that's where the, the organizations like Cal I rescued Charlie about two weeks it was a matted up, dirty little dog in the middle of the country road. I stopped because I was, I thought or and pulled into the driveway of the lady out in the yard, but she said to me, Hit lives here, but it ain't my daughter's dog and I don't want it and she don't. And I think somebody would just should just kill it. And I said, well, ma'am, I can, you know, I'm with, I can take Charlie right now and try to find him a home. I was coming back from dropping off one of our, uh, running down through the night and I was uh, one of five cars. And uh, this white dog comes darting across the road, probably by two cars. She seemed to be hurting from the mouth. She was obviously limping from her hip. The side of her head was bleeding. She had scratches and, and she was obviously in pain. I stayed with her until that he couldn't afford the vet bills, that he was just going to let her. So I said, if you'll release her to me and go tell the vet, Bills and we'll we'll take her in with Kawa and so he agreed. He followed me all the way into the emergency. We brought her in and checked her out, and she had a broken jaw, broken pelvis, and uh, I think 
taking her out. She had heartworms and just a, a, a a uh a solid black german uh i guess probably three to four months old took him in he 40 percent of his body and the woman that owned turbo was it or somehow using candles and candle wax spilled on turbo So he was whining, so she threw him out. Uh, you know, Kawa responded uh, by The first time I seen Hope, she was at the animal. She was at the very last run. I seen her and immediately just started crying. She was case. I mean, I just, she was, has scarring right here uh, her, uh, front leg but even though she had that she still hobbled gave me kisses on my fingers and that's I she was used as bait and uh, and the vets checking her out the thing uh, think happened with her is they bred her out because they bred her and bred her and bred her and then puppies out of her they threw her in. Animal that's been through so much deserves a I'm so glad that she's got it. What I is Education into the classrooms in this. You got to start with the youngsters. By the time they're adults, it's hard to change. Slowly but surely, Kawa is starting to get known in this area and starting to put, you know, just a little bitty, um, I would say, ignorance just dogs more than just cats the, the animals provide more to human being there they deserve a little more respect than just empty trash or candy wrappers do them than that you know they, they serve more of a purpose There's a guy about getting dogs. It's like you're doing it to them. Dave Wixon, and I'm born two months premature. I think it was my left or my, it was either, it was either my left or right lung collapsed. And that happened and palsy. Well, ability, that back, I'll look at it as it, it was, um, it was the hand I was dealt with. It was really good because they helped me a lot do well by myself it and help me spell um, help me with homework I'm Laura to write in 92 we entered 
teen young adults. Individuals with mental retardation really who um, you don't understand, but you know that we have adults that have disabilities that they you know, literally can't granted taught to do a lot of things seems to be giving people voices who don't have and who don't know that they when I first found out I was really excited about it and then like just, just going through the registration and meeting everybody I remember sitting in my apartment that night what have I got into like here I do at home here all, all they ask when I leave the apartments is that I sign We have wellness, fill in, cook, pivot living, uh, eating, oh, really? absolute <laughs> favorite class, complex. I'll say that all the time. I like relationships in an art because and it'll tell you how to <laughs> in all of you talk about all the time in your world, mad. Think about those things. Okay, so like be the best employee that you can. Oh, if you need help. Something other than white cotton socks. White socks are for tennis shoes, you know, for running and stuff like that. And when I came here, I didn't really think about when I'm dressing up for career casual. I didn't think anything about my socks because nobody can see my socks with my pants. But you know, when you when you dress in career dress, socks should match your belt. But uh, I never even thought about that until I came here. Second time doing this. For, for first years, when we get a job over the summer, volunteer work. Third years, get paid. And second years, I think. Yeah. My favorite is probably blue. I love blue. I just like color I don't you know I don't specific stuff like my friend Laura knows golly if it's blue she like it it's blue I told her it's like your entire house everything then it's gonna be blue and your car is gonna be blue and your and your car is gonna be blue there's money out there for for people with disabilities so many of them yeah I could see um, some of that extra money being spent towards a house future for them because you know when eventually their parents aren't around anymore they're gonna have to have somewhere to live.
American myself. I came to New York. Meanings, uh, uh, although according to the laws and the rules, uh, were car. The community that founded this church were pretty much first and second generation Italian immigrants themselves. These are the very same people who have been through the the tragic experiences that the Hispanics face. We all have some background other than outside of the Native American Indians. We're all immigrants in some way. St. Peter's has a community balance between the Hispanic and the English-speaking community all together. I think it's just a few people in the Spanish community, but I think we're we're working on that. Monsignor has been extremely coming in and inviting to them to use this that they're not just intruding on the that it St. Peter's is their church. I was at a uh, business here in Hoover recently and a young man who was Catholic didn't realize St. Peter's was here and I said yeah it's right over here on Patton Chapel Road. That's the Hispanic church and I said no uh, there are 1,700 families here that are English speaking. Where many churches to bring in and, and have, a, uh, have a Spanish Mass so that you are congregations. The only problem is that neither one is taking particular interest in the other because they still have that wall there. The English community in St. Peter is so willing to want to be involved in the community in their own church that they feel it is to learn the language and to learn the culture Hispanic community's obligation to learn English. I'll try to greet them in Spanish. I'll say gracias or I'll say hola and they'll say hello or thank you in response, which you can tell there's an attempt for the two cultures to, to try to relate to each other. In the effort to try to become one. Separated, it actually very much is not. It's actually one church. We do one celebration together that both the Anglos and the Hispanics and that is Good Friday. That's the only service we have where we try to alternate the readings in English. We give people a program that has, if, you're, if it's being read in Spanish, there'll be in there or vice versa. On this, uh, we really feel uh, one in Christ. Look at, at the Book of Masses in St. Peter's. You will find that it in two languages. It's just a simple, just flipping over that. You Actually, a translation of So what, what does it mean? It means one fundamental hard to follow along with some of the reading in Spanish, but having been a Catholic life and going to Mass all my life, it's easy to Mass in Spanish because it's coming next um, based on what the flavor. But it's the same devotion. It doesn't matter uh, from other country or here you really feel it. they don't make the difference.
are willing to put your make people feel welcome and to feel accepted. And they'll sit and they'll really begin to the congregation flourish culturally. Good morning and happy. Really, the main core. Every person is created by God. And he has dignity, and every human being is treated equally. Uh, I think eventually, St. Peter's, uh, they need a path lingual. I am not. Hopefully, in the future, Christian. Fortunately, we have Father Mike who's being coached in the language, and that as he's celebrated daily with the Anglo community, that he can communicate his synergy, love, and his spirit. And the Catholic Church is made up from around the world that speak many different languages. And that's one of the beauties of the church that we try across cultures. is pretty important because they're they're you know you know if somebody's not here to talk these women are gonna make the decision to have their baby killed. If a house is on fire I would I would definitely want to house before I did anything else because there's life and you convince yourself that that child is better off is really to convince yourself that you're a child. So clinic at least 51 Saturdays. So 18 years I've been doing at the clinics. These people are here because they believe that this woman to walk in here without that kind of every Saturday. They're I really have picketers. You know, during the week I might the rest of them are young, which is wonderful and women. I'd say I've seen 12, I would think, off, you know, the regulars, maybe really? Coming here the first time, like, the women coming into the clinic, very upsetting, but... Yeah, especially because they're not. Right. But for us, I mean, we've, for a while, we hear the same, yeah, it's the same stuff over and over again. They don't understand that, you know, being pro-choice, it is supporting abortion as an option. But yeah. We aren't the bad guys. Nothing illegal here. Deliberately set out to do something. Everybody's illegal. And I don't care what you believe in. You can't fall into your own hands. We're not everyone made like that. I uh, got that phone call early in the morning um, that changed and it was from my administrator at the time and she said Do you have that's for us they bombed the clinic and hung up the phone you know, found out Sandy had and Emily was in surgery to 
the skin and the muscles off both of my lower legs. Broke my left leg. Got a play. My face was torn up off the left. And hundreds of nails. Shrapnel everywhere. I mean, it was designed to kill people. It was not designed to hurt. Oh my, my. I was standing right where you're standing, right there. When this right in front of me. When the bomb went off, off, set the bomb off. Oh, when they told me that that, that really happened, cause I didn't know that he had really gotten up off the ground, and I just started crying. It just hurt me, it really hurt me. It just the most horrible day out here they ever had is when uh, this policeman got killed. And then we got to rebuilding the clinic, which took a week, was closed. Not a single staff person, which amazed me. They were all back in here. That's, uh, that still amazes me. One of the things that I do in Operation Rescue is train our people to reach the employees and the escorts. Do. That's what I, my, um, I want to use that word in, in Operation Rescue. So I have a very good relationship with them. I brought them some socks and they're wearing the socks that I gave them now, these girls over here that are escorts. Because I get a chance to share with them. I know they're not going to hear the gospel in University of Montevallo. They're, there's not, they're not going to hear that issue from most, if not all, of their professors down there. I see them. I'm glad they're here. I wish they'd bring more. We actually don't talk about abortion that much with David. <laughs> Which I guess is just because, okay, we both know each other. Just going to convince the other. See, it's always strange to me because he always seems like a nice person, but then he has such, like, intolerant belief. And so it seems like... Kind of, I feel like if they know who we are and they know people and we have personalities, they're going to be... We're opposed to the kids children and the employees in this clinic. I mean, killing does not stop more killing. You know, we're here to share the gospel and hope that people commit their lives to the Lord. That's why we're here. Talking of, know your enemies. Talking is fine. Uh, but past that, I think it's a mistake. This place is a multicultural resource center for anybody who is an immigrant in the United States. Him area and needs help to learn how to live here. multi center is very important for the community Spanish. Uh, we have a to medicine, dog food, clothes, everything completely free and we have English class every day here completely free too. We do a lot of translations, birth certificates and forms and uh, right now that's the we do a lot of the taxes. Well in uh, 2003, sometime in the fall, um, the city recognized that there was, they were getting a lot of complaints from residents who were seeing all the workers out on the street. 
on Lorna Road in the apartments and certainly in the, apart in the gas stations on either side of the road. One of the organizations that the, the city of Hoover went to was Catholic Family Services. The social workers there developed a plan for the use of the house that would accommodate also the workers. And that was the plan that the city decided to accept. Then we were having a council in the city of Hoover and almost all except one councilman campaigned on eliminating the Hispanic influence in the Hoover area. In August of 2005, the new council voted to break our contract. So we were, we were given, we had to be out by uh, August 15th. And I think that they really thought that would be the end of our program. A parishioner from St. Peter's heard that, you know, we were going to be closed, so we didn't have a place to go. So he offered this place for us. So he, he really gives us the rent, the electricity, and all that. In the multicultural center, we have a help always. All people here is very nice people. So we try to help them as much as we can. They come here and they need a doctor. We try to tell them where to go and, you know, even rent, power bills. Just try to be a family for them. I think that's what... They, and they look at it, they put the name La Casita, the house. ESL stands for English as a Second Language. So the classes are for people who do not speak English. Well, some don't speak it at all. There's no continuity of students as you would have in a college course or even in a, even in an ESL class that meets regularly on a regular schedule. We all have students who have left simply because the weather has become nice. And they can get outdoor work that they couldn't get. Early. I hope they can. If they stay yeah. on the street. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes get students who come in late just because they didn't, did not happen to get a job that day. But the learning the English as, as important as we think it is 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 the pri is the secondary concern for many of these people. Frank or yeah, Frank. Get to work. Yes, sir. Okay, we do it to go to work. Everything is ready on the job. <laughs> uh, what time and where? I'm ready to go. I can't. I would like to stay here more time, but uh, all right. Yeah, the ones that are here without any documentation are very vulnerable. Um, one of the things is the work situation. They come to me and they say, I went with this guy to work for four weeks. He didn't pay me. And I have to call. And, you know, they're very, very mean to me. And they even hang up. And sometimes they lose their money. But a lot of them are in need. That they say they trust and they just are, you know, are desperate to work. Actually, they treat them almost like slaves. Some people, some, and others are absolutely wonderful. Other employers, absolutely wonderful. But um, some people use the people. They need to write the tag number, the the person that they're they're going with, and then just try to write the streets are you going to go at the house are you going to be working and. Try to see 459, 59, 65, and kind of write it down so you can, you know, have something and maybe have his signature. I feel better here in Alabama. And different completely. Florida, New York, California is completely different. Because Hispanics and Mexicans in California, I mean, they're immediately stereotyped. That whole kind of this reputation of the lazy Mexican well, that's not even really known here because everybody, they're, they're great workers, they're hard workers. You came here yesterday? Yes. I, yes. My call, my wife called me from California. Take it. Get up. Get up. Get up. It's time to <laughs> study English. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you play at restaurants? Yes. Or parties too? Or just? And parties too. What restaurant do you play at? Tomorrow we'll start in the 
True amigos. Just a, such a, a flux now, you know, um, kind of uncertainty about what's going to happen with immigration because there's just so many bills that are so anti, you know, uh, helping the people instead of looking toward a positive solution. Some people think mm, to volunteer you have to be bilingual, but uh, the language is not, you know, the important thing is you, what you have in your heart, the desire to serve others that are in need. My dream to grow a lot, to be really smart, to learn a lot, to know English really good, to be a member of the UAB University, to have a career. I'm 22 years old, but I think that it's not enough to continue. I wish to have a career. You know, I, I think I feel very strongly about Pottersville, and I, I think people should know about it. I didn't know what to expect the first time I came. Just like most people don't, they just, Pottersville, well, where are the markers? You know, I know Juanita said she came by here the other day with some women from Covington Place. And, well, that can't be a cemetery. There's nothing there, you know. They expect to see markers and things, and, and it just don't happen. It just don't happen. I would say that 80% of Jefferson County does not know that we have a county cemetery, a pauper cemetery. In fact, many of the surrounding counties don't have cemeteries. I mean, most, most of the counties in Alabama don't have a county cemetery. I guess for me it's about a 25-mile drive from Homewood all the way up to almost the, the Jefferson County line. Um, a tiny little town called Morris that I had never heard of um, prior to reading the first article in the newspaper that I came across about the Potter's Field. And I've got those scrapbooks. I, I got them out again last night and read the big article that was in the Birmingham News in June of 2001. And it's, it's a great article. And you wonder why people, when articles like that are in the paper, why people don't think more about them. But I guess, well, you know, that don't concern me, and they maybe read it or maybe don't read it and go on about the business. We've buried shooting victims. We've buried people that have died, died from drug overdoses. We've died, we've uh, 
we bury people that have been burned to death, um, spousal abuse. You can come and go to the cemetery. You can go to the you can go to the funeral service out there when we do the county burials. Anybody is welcome. But basically, I I get very few people from outside families um, that will call and say, "Hey, can I come out to the?" Some hospice people. Some um, sometimes you get a nursing home staff that's going to attach to a person. Um, Department of uh, DHR um, will sometimes sit out a couple people. But basically, uh, it's open to everybody, but we get very few. There's several of us that go, but we always have at least two people to go. Because otherwise, the people that dig the grave and the chaplain is the only person there. I've been knowing that the Pauper Cemetery was here for I don't know how many years. Uh, I had never really, I guess, been down here um, until I started coming about a year ago with Juanita. One day, I picked up a section of the newspaper about and read one article. And the article was about Juanita Crow and some of her friends from the beautification board that had had taken on the responsibility of attending all the funerals here at the Potter's Field. Juanita, um, I guess, seen an article or on television about the baby that was found in the dumpster and she felt very moved. And I, I have no idea why that one hit me like it did because usually you read it all the time. But I, I guess because the baby. And that's when she started, she started coming in. I don't know how long she came before she drug the volunteers from the beautification board into it. I was going to be there while the funeral was going on. <laughs> They're not going to be buried without me there or without somebody there, not just me. But knowing that somebody cares could mean a lot. I mean, these people are going to be laid to rest in a, in a, in a, literally a press board casket inside a body bag, covered up. They're transported from here to the cemetery in a county truck, and their graves are marked with a, with a coffee can filled with concrete with a number on top of it. And for hereever after, in the master logbook, the cemetery master logbook, their number, they have a name beside the number. But that's how their graves are marked. It's not an Elmwood experience. It's literally the least of those among us. swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. We said on the day, lo, this is we have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. I am but one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I should do. And there's a lot of power in that. If 
with each of us there's a little bit more about the people that are around us, then maybe there won't be people or as many people who have to die alone or live alone. I'm not sure which is worse. What is this that I can't see with ice cold hands taking hold of me? Well, I am death, none can excel. I'll open the door to heaven or hell. Oh, death, someone would pray. Won't you pass me over for another day? The children prayed, the preacher preached. Time and mercy is out of your reach. I'll fix your feet so you can't walk. I'll lock your jaw so you can't talk. I'll close your eyes so you can't see this very high. Come go with me. Death, I come to take the soul. I'll leave the body and leave it cold. To drop the flesh off of the frame, the earth and worms will have their claim. Oh, oh, oh death, oh, 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 death, won't you bear me over till another year?